Now, melanin is commonly associated with the your color of your skin. And that's what gives your skin its color. We call that pigment, uh, melanin. But it's also in your nervous system, which causes you to transmit information faster and to store more information than any other race. And it's also in your bones, which cause you to retain more minerals than any other race. And of course, it's in your muscles that cause you to have what we call fast twitch reaction. You have a faster reaction time. And you have more vitamins and minerals in your muscles than any other race. Melanin is also in your eyes that cause you to absorb more color than any other race. And of course, it's in your ears and you absorb more sound. So you will see colors differently than anybody else, and you will hear differently. So therefore, your music will always be different, and you always put together colors differently. Melanin is in your taste buds, which cause you to have the ability to taste the full flavor of the food. You absorb more, more taste. So you always combine your food differently, and you eat somebody else's food and say, that's bland, or whatever you want to say. You know what I'm saying. That's because they are not. They don't have the ability to taste the full flavor of food like you do. The melanin causes you to have this ability. It's what we call the biochemical marker of life. The more melanin you have, the more civilized you are. The more melanin you have, the more psychic you are. The more. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm saying the more melanin you, you have, the more human you are. And that is what we're talking about. We're talking about how to understand this unique ability to be human, to be melanated, and how to sustain it. The problem with this melanin is that all drugs work by destroying melanin. It's not a drug unless it can destroy melanin in some way. It has to speed it up, slow it down, or destroy it. But they use different terms when they talk about melanin. They won't say melanin. They may say melatonin, which is made from melanin or they may say serotonin, which is made from melanin. These are hormones that are made from melanin. So you read in the literature, it says melatonin or serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Those are alchemical terms that say re it stops, inhibits, stops your body from using melatonin, which is made from melanin, which means it stops your body from using melanin. And we simply use these big old awkward terms and we say it's just melatonin reuptake or serotonin reuptake inhibitor. The problem with science is it's a very crude way to, to explain something. That's the problem with science. It's very crude. You can arrive at truth quicker with your spirituality than you can with some science. I'll be clear on that. Science is a very awkward and crude way to explain something because you have all these dumb formulas and stuff to move around, and then you've got to use this foreign language, Latin, and all this kind of stuff that we get into. Then when we try to explain something to you, we wonder why you don't understand. So it's a very crude way to explain things. But don't get lost in this jargon of science that I may use. Just simply remember that you cannot have science without culture. Culture precedes everything. It precedes everything. You can't have science without culture. You can't have biology without culture. You can't have a relationship without culture. You don't know the words to use. People are classified by their culture. We call it gender. So you have a sex, male and female, but gender says that men have short hair, women have long hair, women wear dress, men wear pants. That's what we call gender. So gender helps you to even see the other sex. You can't relate to them without this gender stuff. Men are supposed to do this. Women are supposed to do that. That has nothing to do with nature. That's just gender. And gender you get from your culture. Your culture allows you to see each other, to hear each other, and to relate e to each other. And culture is a combination of how you are chemically. So you would always have a different culture because your chemicals in your body are different because of the melanin. We're back to the melanin again, which times how you grow. It's, it tells you your body, say, now you're supposed to be a teenager. Now you're supposed to have pubic hair. Melanin does that. It times just the cycles in your life. So when you mess with that melanin, you're messing with a lot of stuff there. 
you're messing with the cycles of the person, the rhythmicity of their body, you're messing with the digestive system, the reproductive system, and you're messing with that melanin because that's the biochemical key to life. That's how you measure the age of a mummy. That's how we measure the age of your brain, how much melatonin is in it. It's the chemical key, but we don't use this word too much in science, probably because it will lead to black people. So we don't want to lead any information to black people because we want to establish that black people are dumb. So if you start using this word melanin, you can say, well, who has the most melanin? What, what are we talking about here? So every time they have a melanin conference in the world, which is every three years, the Germans come, the Italians come, the U.S. comes, the Canadians come, but no one black is ever invited or has ever attended the melanin conference. And that's done on purpose. Primarily because melanin is how you deal with military. It's how you send a space capsule out in space because if you don't have a melanin coating on it, when it comes back into Earth, it'll burn up. So they coat the space capsule with the synthetic melanin. So that's used for a lot of things. It's how, you, it's how they imitated what you call a computer chip. So how can we store this information? They said, well, let's store it the way melanin is shaped. So they imitated melanin, and they call that a computer chip. So every time you get into this science, you say, well, some kind of reason, we end up with this melanin issue. Every time. That's what they call stem cells. That's melanin. You want to get to how the cell germinates and grow. And anything that's growing has got to grow from this black, the black dot. We call it melanin. So you get it from the stem cell, as they call it, which is basically a board of fetus, fetus tissue these days. So we're talking about sociology. We're talking about biology. We're talking about a lot of things when we get into talking about melanin. It's just not an isolated like chemical like you think. It's more than that. But it doesn't make black people great. There's something other than that that makes us a great people. It's just one of the things that makes us exceptional to everybody in the world except us, of course. But uh, it's just one of the things. Now, this is Carl Bond's book. Uh, he, he wrote a pretty good piece on melanin. Uh, this, uh, they, you can hear me without this microphone, right? Yeah, because, you know, I'm kind of like, uh, this is like Freudian to me, and I just don't like a black penis stuck in my mouth. <laughs> I don't want to go in no sidebars this morning, <laughs> but I almost went there. <laughs> so th I think that's on your first page in your booklet where we use the, the Egyptian word kimwa, kimwa, melanin. So that's the Egyptian word for it. And that's what they call the melanin conference, kimwa. Now we have the responsibility, let me see the first one here, responsible for civilization. We just went over that. It's a neutralizer. Well, that's another thing there. What they're saying about melanin and the nuts and bolts of it is, if this chair here was made out of melanin and you burn it and destroy it and threw away, threw it away, you could still sit on it because you can't destroy melanin. That's what I'm saying. You can't destroy it. They used to put it in a little vial and call it your relics in, in, in Egypt. So you really can't destroy it at all. That's, that's one of the keys to this melanin issue here. It acts as a free radical, meaning it, try to, it keeps everything in harmony and organized in your body. And anything that's not organized, they call it free in the body. So they no, you belong in a family here. What you doing out there by yourself? So the melanin say, no, you're going in a family. So it goes after it and puts it in a family. We call that free radical. White people call it radical when you're free, you know. That's their term, you understand? It's unchanged by radiation. It oxidizes substances, which simply means it helps your body to digest things. We use these terms. Don't get lost in them. We say oxidize when we say something is being broken down. We say oxidize in chemistry. It's like you leave a piece of metal outside and it starts rusting. Well, we won't say rust. We'll say oxidizing, which means it's rusting. It's 
breaking apart. But we, don't, we don't say rusting because you would understand what we're talking about. The key is for me not to give you some words that you understand. That way you're taking away my money. Because I'm in a medical business and it's a hustle. And if I let you know everything, then you don't need me. So we've got to switch language here. But actually, all oxidizing means is the thing is rusting and falling apart. But oxidizing is better. And it reduces another thing. It reduces. This is our term of helping to build. It helps build things, other cells, other tissues. You've, you've seen it maybe when you see a sperm, it has a little black dot in the center. That's the melanin. And you see a cell, like in biology, you see a cell and there's a little black center in there. That's melanin. We call it the new sun in biology, which you call the nucleus. That's made out of melanin. We call it the new sun, nucleus. So we're talking about building things, which we call it reducing, just to confuse you. It's kind of weird. So if I'm going to build something, I got to get the energy from someplace to build it. So what I, where I got the energy from gets reduced, and I get built. So, so anytime you get confused with these terms, just ask me, because I'm just as confused as you are. That's why I don't like to use them that much. It's really whacked, as the kids were saying. Now, don't get lost in this uh, whole workshop now. If you don't understand the term now, it's your money. You're going to let me talk, and you understand what I'm talking about, damn it. That's your problem. All you got to do is stop me and say, hey, I didn't understand it. Go back over it. I mean, no problem. I'm just sitting there. Okay, now we go to the anatomy page, which deals with the biology of it all. And we're looking at the biological difference between black people and white people here. And I believe you have a chart on the preceding page that tells you that the classification of the races. Hmm? Yeah. Let me, let me get to that up here. Be a little more visual with this whole thing. Do you have classification of the races? Okay, I, I'll, I'll flash it up here. But you, you have all the information. No problem. No problem. So we, we're looking at how races are classified. This is a classification done by white people, of course. And as you can see on that classification on page seven, they don't understand that part of it. They don't understand it's destroying the kidneys. They believe this stuff. They believe in their medicine. But it's not. That's the risk, isn't it? Not getting the child's it's, it's not a risk, it's damaging. It's leading to a disease. See, uh, I really don't want to go down this trail, but in any case, um, no, 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 we, we talk, we're talking about nature, and nature is not like you think. Nature doesn't give a damn about you. Nature just cares about the next generation. Nature doesn't care. Nature will say, like, uh, some people are born is dumb, some people are smart. Nature doesn't care. Nature just cares about the next generation. It's like genes. Genes just cares about what you call genetics and gene therapy. That cares about the next generation because a gene will make someone handicapped and it makes someone perfect. Genes don't give a damn. They just want to be alive. But, so nature, in de by definition, is not this thing you call loving and nurturing. Nature does not care. Nature will born a freak just as quick as it born somebody is healthy. Someone smart, someone dumb. Doesn't care. The whole thing is for nature to survive. And nature will survive at all costs, even if it has to make you into an alcoholic. Doesn't care. Because nature says, I will survive. So a lot of people have an idea about nature, but that's based on their culture. They define nature by its culture. Nature has nothing to do with what you're thinking about. Nothing. Nature says, I'm going to survive. Even have to make you into a freak with three arms and one leg. Don't give a damn. And you know that. People are born deformed. Some people are born perfect. Some people are born dumb. Some people are born smart because nature doesn't care. But we come with this cultural thing and we think nature is loving and all. I'll be damned. You can't prove it. There's a lot of things that are just stupidly done, but nature doesn't care. 
Ideally, the baby should not be delivered through the vagina. It's too risky. You just take the shortcut, slice open, come out. It'd be better to be born through the navel. 